And um, if we take a company like Costco in the US, you know, it completely transformed uh, that segment of the, of the industry. You know, Costco today is a $90 billion animal. It was the first American company to get to $6 billion in less than five years. And really, what we've seen from Costco and other retailers, this is just an example, of course, they put a lot of pressure on you know, what we would define as the mom and pop uh, stores in terms of retailing. If I turn to Canada, you know, the, the famous Circus du Soleil, they brought a new definition to circus entertainment. Right? This is a company today that operates in 271 countries, has net revenues of around a billion dollars, and effectively in the geographies where they've operated, they've really made almost obsolete the traditional circus in the entertainment business. And then I like, I like this last one, Yumblin. Who's heard of Yumblin? It's a, it's a new uh, startup company in Mexico that's, that's recently gone uh, public. And they are phenomenally dynamic. They, they are looking to really redefine the way consumers in Mexico um, access their entertainment, whether it be music, theater, etc., all through handheld device. Probably what they will do is really challenge the traditional channels of, uh, of, of ticket sales for entertainment um, and, another and the other variety of, um, of, of, of entertainment that goes with it. So again, they are looking to replace the telephone and also other services. So I think the common theme here is that none of us in the room want to be in the examples of being chewed up by the fast. We individually and collectively want to be the ones who are fast and eating the slow. So linked to this concept of speed and a little bit back to the, um, to the internet, you know, I would say that real time is the new time. And by that I mean when you look at these geniuses in Silicon Valley and the, the guys that are working for the likes of Facebook and Twitter, etc., they are bringing an enormous amount of power right, to, to the individual through um, social media and, let's say, uh, digital media uh, platforms. And this really has a substantial business opportunity for our industry. This is not just about surfing the uh, internet, and I'll come back to this um, shortly. But just to give you an idea on, on how precise the social media profiling can be, who do you think can predict with an 80% accuracy when a 20 to 30 year old is going to change their dating status, i.e. break up with their boyfriend or girlfriend? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's Facebook. With an 80% accuracy, this can be uh, pinpointed. Now, okay, what does that mean for, 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 for us in business? Well, if you're um, in, the, uh, in the business, for example, of fitness centers, or you're in, in the business of cinemas and entertainment, or if you're in the business of indulgent products like chocolates or whatever, when you're tapping into um, digital media and the profile of these individuals, uh, you can specifically target products at a very opportune time and capture opportunities. And I'll give some examples of that uh, um, shortly. So link, link to that and trying to make this a little bit more tangible from a business perspective. You know, one of the uh, great examples that I like is um, coming from the brand Pretzels, okay? So before this product was actually uh, launched, what the company did is that they, they spent some time um, tapping into the um, social media chats that were taking place between those with those consumers uh, on the internet who they identified as a strong target audience for this type of snack product. So what they profiled was a certain age group, people chatting on the web, who were talking about snacks, the good, the bad, what they liked, what they didn't like, the issues with nutrition and calories, etc. 
And they observed for a number of months the key trends around these discussions, particularly with people in, uh, in office locations. What they then did is they took that database of people and directly sent samples to those people in their offices and homes. The offtake of sales and the repeat purchase led this particular brand to having an 87% increase in sales in the following 12 months. Now, of course, this wasn't the only program that they did, but it was a very targeted, very, very successful program through using the internet. That's really the message here. If we then <clears throat> look to a company called you know, SurveyMonkey, right? Um, this is a, an internet-based um, uh, service of which part of what it does is, is, is um, do consumer research. You know, the top 100 fortune companies, interestingly enough, all use um, SurveyMonkey. And the benefit to them is, you know, real-time um, uh, feedback in a very compressed period of time versus traditional research methods and with a relatively high degree of accuracy. And guess what? At a substantially lower cost. So again, another practical example of using, of using the digital age practically for what was a, traditionally a fairly traditional type of activity market research to speed things up uh, from a time point of view. And the third component, which is sort of linked to the second example there somewhat, is a company like Yelp, who, who again can, can, can help us uh, really track uh, real-time consumer uh, satisfaction feedback in terms of what do the consumers think of your products, what are the reasons why, um, not from a hypothetical perspective, not from an interview process, you know, from real-time, real examples. And the companies that are using uh, uh, this tool uh, particularly well are also using it to get feedback on new product ideas rather than just guessing or doing the traditional uh, research. I'm not at all suggesting that these techniques replace the traditional methods what I am saying is that they complement and they can really help address the issue of speed within the sphere of your business operations. So moving on to the second block, um, which we've termed that age uh, matters. So I'd like to call out two consumer groups here, which in our time is really redefining uh, to a large extent um, a lot of innovation, and how products are being developed and how products are being demanded from two consumer groups which, in the case of North America, represent um, well over 200 million people in terms of population. And that is the, both the millennials and the baby boomers. So let's just take a look at some of the elements of why millennials are highly relevant to us. You know, there's many definitions around millennials. Traditionally speaking, one of the most common is that they were born post-1983. So therefore, they're um, um, anywhere from 18 to 34 years of, of age. Now, the real message here right, is not about age. It's that this is a consumer group that day in, day out, are really living this world of fast speed changes. They're 130 million strong across um, Mexico, Canada, and the US. They're highly multicultural, not just in terms of ethnicity, but also in terms of what and how they consume. They're obviously more liberal than they are uh, relig religious, and they place a very high importance on uh, being technology literate. You know, they, they, they really spend considerable time um, uh, with technology. Uh, to give you an idea, 65% of them sleep with their telephone. Okay? And um, they're very much a, a pop culture uh, driven um, theme and very highly educated, but they are incredibly demanding when it comes to products. And coming to a topic which I'll talk, talk on shortly is the very international. So because of their technology drive, they're surfing the net and understanding the trends that are happening around the world, not just social or political, um, but certainly products and products that are interest 
to them. They don't join companies for um, necessary for the job for life, right? Uh, they, they, they believe in, in, in educating and reinventing themselves and moving um, uh, across organizations. If we then take the, the baby boomers, okay, roughly 45 to, to 65 years of age, approximately represent 100 million consumers across our three um, respective countries, highly multicultural, okay? Interestingly enough, very health orientated. And when we start to see the growth of the products within our industry um, in the areas of organic and good for you products, this is very much a consumer segment combined with the millennials who have a real strong thirst and appetite for a product for me that really delivers a, uh, a health um, uh, benefit. Interestingly enough, um, approximately 70% of all cosmetic or plastic surgery that's, that's done across our three countries uh, are done with this um, uh, baby boomer group because they want to look and feel good and uh, this is very much a strong um, trend. Interestingly enough, also there is a strong desire and work ethic where four out of five will work beyond the age of 65. So if we take these nice statistics and we say, okay, what does this mean for us as an industry? You know, Tetra Pak has been, has been mapping these two uh, consumer groups, particularly in North America. And we've put together this, <clears throat> what I would call an infographic here on the screen, difficult to read, uh, but we will uh, send each of you a copy of it because there's some really interesting things on here that have been identified for us as a business. But if I was to come down to one a uh, key message from these two consumer groups for our industry. It's something that, you know, really, when I get to the bottom line, it's that these two consumer groups that, as I said, are nearly 250 million people across our three countries are going through a trend of buying small. They're no longer interested in the one-gallon jug of milk. They're no longer interested in the V8 huge car, right? They're no longer interested in the six bedroom house. They go into smaller house sizes, higher urbanization, smaller cars, a lot more focus around environmental uh, uh, based value proposition and products. And in the context of the food and beverage and dairy industry, they are going to small size uh, portion options. Now, interestingly enough, that, and here I think is the good message for our retailers who are always wanting to drive the overall category growth and, and in many cases they want to upsize to drive more revenue through their stores. When you look at the key products that both the baby boomers and the millennials are wanting to buy in small size, these are value added products. These are products that sell and command a premium and guess what, we all know that typically means as an opportunity for us for greater margins. So this is a good trend. This is a phenomenal uh, consumer group, and it's certainly something at Tetra Pak where we're trying to both recruit internally and use external advisors very much to help sharpen our focus to ensure that we understand the needs uh, of these groups so as we can meet their needs and capitalize on them.